Oh my god, did you seriously make that? <laughs> yeah, I did, actually. I crochet. Ah. How's everybody doing? I'm doing well. Did you know that I crochet? Yeah, I do. I crochet a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Sorry about last week. Uh, I actually had a funeral. Uh, my godmother died, and... Uh, I was just kind of like everywhere and all over the place. And I was like, do I say anything about it on my page or on my YouTube or, and I was like, no, maybe I'll just talk about it in the next podcast. And, uh, yeah. So I just kind of, I was on a hiatus. I had a family member pass away and so there's to it, right? Life happens. Life life does that. But in today's podcast, for today's episode of Lost My Ducks season three, possibly episode 10. I don't, I don't know. Try this stuff. It's not sponsored. It should be Alani. Yeah. It's pretty good. And it doesn't make me sick like the other energy drinks do. So give it a try. Anyways, besides that, Besides me hawking products on my podcast that I'm not sponsored for, but I should be. Uh, I want to talk about hobbies today and why hobbies are so freaking important to have. And a hobby can be anything from reading to crocheting. I'm going to crochet while we're talking because I'm doing a craft sale and, uh, yeah. <laughs> the more rows you get done, the better. The more productive your day is. And please excuse like the humming kind of noise. Um, I have my air cleaner on <sighs> because we've been tearing the house apart. I'm going to show you guys, actually, I'm going to show you how much shit, like how many clothes I have gotten rid of and I'm taking to wins. Just like watch, 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 watch. Did you like my, my special effect noise there? Yeah. Isn't that insane? I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. All that's going to wins. Wins is women in need. And I figured it's all plus size clothing. And instead of taking it to like consignment or something, there's some chunky ladies who need some free clothes. If anybody wants to give me free clothes, I don't need free clothes. Forget that. Scratch that. Give them to somebody else. There we go. Anywho, um, I have the air cleaner on because it got dusty in here. So that's also what I've been doing. I find when I have uh, family events and like tragedies and stuff happen, I clean. Not normal clean. Like clean all the cleaning. Anywho. I have hobbies and I think everybody should have hobbies. So my hobby is crocheting. I also read. Um, I love to read. Hobbies can be anything as long as you're like stimulating your imagination for me. That's what a hobby is. I know like some people are like, oh, my hobby is working out, for example. And that's really cool. And I'm glad you work out and everything. But I think unless it's stimulating your imagination, I feel like maybe listen to an audiobook while you're working out. I actually know quite a few people who do that, listen to audiobooks while they're exercising and it's like Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. You're off to throw the ring into the pit of Mordor or whatever the hell it is. I, I read all the Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen all the movies. Eh. It just wasn't for me. It's just not my, not my jam. You know what I mean? But I feel like having hobbies should stimulate the imagination. Why should you stimulate your imagination? Because it's healthy. It helps your brain grow. It helps you create more cognitive pathways. I know that sounds weird, but it does. And there's something to like, uh, the lumosity stuff and the whatever it's like neurodiversity or something like that. I don't remember the exact term, but, um, 
there's something to that. I, I feel that the more we exercise our brains, the healthier we become. So I exercise my brain all the time. And genetically, I'm not healthy, but that's okay. Um, mentally, I feel like I'm healthier than I've ever been in my entire life. So why I crochet and why I picked crochet of all the things, um, all the things that I could do was my friend Jess. And the reason I mention her by name on this channel is because she said it's cool. Okay, she said it's cool. I've mentioned her before. She said it's cool. So my friend Jess and I were out and abouting. Uh, we were actually going through shopping because that's what we do. We'll like go have lunch. We'll do like, we'll do something like cheap for lunch. Like it'll be like, oh, let's go get like an egg sandwich from McDonald's or something. And she'll get the chicken one because she doesn't like eggs. Anyways, so we'll go get like a little breakfast thing and or a lunch thing. And then we'll go thrift shopping and do our money at the thrift shop, thrift shop. So anyways, we wound up in Dollarama of all places. And she was like, uh, you've got to learn to crochet. And I'm like, okay. So we're in Dollarama and Dollarama sells like little yarn and little crochet hooks and stuff. And, uh, she's like, this is how you do this. <laughs> and she's teaching me how to crochet in Dollarama. <laughs> And then we go to Walmart because, like, we had to pick up some stuff. Walmart in Canada is different than Walmart America. Okay. It's not trashy. Well, some of them are. Um, Westbrook Walmart, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or the Marlboro Walmart. Anyways, um, there's... They vary, but, it, like, it's kind of... We don't have Target anymore because Target in Canada was really trashy. Anyway... So, okay, so we're in Walmart. We're in Walmart. And uh, she bought me my first crochet hook. And I still have it. And I don't know where my bag of crochet hooks is. That's okay. I have one. <laughs> I'll find the other ones. Um, and, yeah, she taught me how to crochet. Like, just a simple... Actually, I think the first stitch that I learned was a half double crochet. And then I went online and I'm like, I love crocheting. And I taught myself all the crochet. Like, now I know how to Tunisian crochet, and I'm actually pretty good at it. Like, there's one right here. This is Tunisian crochet. It's a scarf. It's pretty. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's very pretty. I gotta put some, like, little tassels on the end. I always, like, do my whole project, and then I'll put the stuff on. So... I actually have a whole bag of shit over there that's uh, waiting for its, like, pom-poms and tassels. And I'll sit down and I'll do that. It'll take me about a day, but I'll sit down and I'll do it. Anyways, Jess taught me how to crochet. My first crochet stitch was the half double. And, like, the one I'm working on right now is called a single crochet chevron stitch. So it's important to have hobbies. Uh, I found that my hobby of crochet all day... Um, one, it's made me money. Two, I thoroughly enjoy it. Three, it has cost me more money than I have made because if you remember when we looked at the clothes, that bookshelf, every one of those blue bins is like at the breaking point of stuffed with yarn. <laughs> I also have a clear tote down beside me full of yarn. I also have a coffee table in front of me that's like two tiers filled with yarn. <laughs> I also have a bag. There's one, two, there's three skeins in there <laughs> filled with yarn. Um, this bag right here filled with yarn. <laughs> so you also develop a yarn habit when you start crocheting. Just remember that part. You'll, you'll develop the yarn habit. Which is fun. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Hobbies. Why you should have a hobby. My hobby has kept me sane. Okay. And I, people sometimes are like, oh, did you pick up that hobby? Like when you went to day hospital? And I'm like, no, it was Jess. 
Um, the hobby I picked up at day hospital, I would doodle a lot at day hospital. And I was like, this is kind of dumb. Um, but it was art. Like my mom's an artist. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should have like some sort of, do some sort of art. Um, I can't. <laughs> I'm not an artiste. Okay. I very, very much am a crocheter and I do nail art. I guess like that's an artist enough. Anyways, yammer, yammer, yammer. So aside from my like obvious crochet and nail art stuff, um, hobbies, why they are so important to exercise your imagination. I had another friend and they only ever read, like their hobby is reading. Okay. Loves to read. They only ever read, uh, nonfiction. Yeah, I know. Like everything had to be something that they learned from, or it had to be like a biography or it had, and if those aren't fiction, <laughs> anyways. Um, so it had to be something that educated them. And I'm like, why aren't you reading fiction? You know, like anybody who's ever read fiction knows that it is very much based in reality. And usually fiction writers will, I know this from experience, base their characters off people they know in real life. Okay. They will base characters off of certain people or they'll mix people together or they'll only like half a person's personality, but they always base them off people they know in real life. And I know they do that in nonfiction as well, but in nonfiction, like it almost seems that they kind of calm it down. Okay. All of the nonfiction I've read, I'm like, you know what? It just, it seems very subdued probably because they're talking about real people. Whereas in fiction, you can embellish a little bit, or if you know, like crazy, crazy, then you, you put it in your book and you're like, okay, we're just going to talk about this person as is, and we're going to name them Sharon. I don't know why that just popped in my head, but Sharon Alzar from planet Omicron Percy I eight. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Kind of. Anyways, um, you can embellish a little bit or just actually talk about Sharon as Sharon actually is. Uh, whereas I find in nonfiction, it's very much like, you know, Sharon and Sharon's your friend and you're calling her Sharon Smith and her name is Sharon Smythe. You know what I mean? Or just Sharon Smith or Sharon Smythe, or whatever her name is, you're like, oh, my friend Sharon. And it's actually Sharon. So that's what I find is like the difference between fiction and nonfiction. Also, when you're reading fiction, I find with the exercise of the imagination, it can take you to different places. And this is what I tried to explain to this friend of mine. And they were, they, they were always adamant. No, 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 no. And then they read a Daniel Steele book. They were like, what is this? They're like, I learned more about interpersonal relationships in this book than I've ever learned in any other book ever. And I'm like, that's what they do. That's what they do. It's based in reality, but it's embellished. It's like, oh, let's set this on a spaceship. Let's set this in the past. And there's aliens invading. Let's set this you know, 10 years in the future and we got taken over by zombies or whatever, or werewolves or vampires, or, uh, like we could get into some Lovecraftian fiction, some cosmic horror and just get real weird. Uh, but it's, it's relationships, it's relationships and it's real relationships. I find that when you're reading the nonfiction, it, it's still real relationships, but it's like, I don't think that's how that went. You did not go to bed every night and give your husband a kiss on the cheek and say, I love you, dear. <laughs> Cause that's not reality. <laughs> okay. I find that in fiction, it's like, oh, this one night we went to bed 
and like there was flying spaghetti monsters and I kissed my husband and I said, I don't know what's going to happen, man. Have a good sleep. <laughs> like, I find it way more based in reality, even though there's flying spaghetti monsters. Do you know what I mean? I just find the, the relationships are, and they're a lot more thought out because in fiction, I feel that the relationship is what gets you through the flying spaghetti monster invasion. I think that's what gets you through it. So the relationship is explained and explored even more. So they're really into fiction now and I love it and that's fine. And I'm like, good for you, but hobbies. So always have a hobby that exercises your imagination. And now that person, that friend of mine has a hobby that exercises their imagination. One that they never thought that they would have. And they've told me it's, it's opened them up a bit more. They are one of those people where everything is factual and everything is to the point and all of, all their ducks are in a row. And I am sitting there watching this person and I'm like, I don't know where my ducks are and that's okay. I think one's on the roof over there and the other one's down in Tijuana. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know where they are. They show up from time to time and they're like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, where the fuck have you been? Anyway, they're one of those people where every single duck has to be exactly where it is all the time. And they have to learn from each duck. And each duck has different forms of information in it. I am not like that. And, like, it's cool that people are like that. And everybody's different and... It, you know, respect everybody's differences, but also life can get kind of boring. So, anywho, that's why I crochet. I crochet because it helps focus my attention. It also calms me down, even though there are days where apparently I don't know how to count. Did you know that? Because I'll count to 10 and sometimes it's 9 or 11. And oh, oh, if you're old enough, you'll get that. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So yeah, you learn very rapidly how much patience you have and whether or not you know how to count when you crochet or knit or any of the counting fiber arts, which is all of them. You also learn that there is a whole, whole area of fiber art drama that I didn't know about. Like, do you want to talk about the tea? Anyway, there's a gal's channel that I watch and she's fun and she does uh, fiber art drama. <laughs> I'm like, what? I didn't know that was a thing, but I guess like knitting circles is just like a gossip column. So... Yeah, it is a thing. It's a thing. It's fine. It's fine that it's a thing. We're good. Okay. Good enough. Anywho. That's it. That's it for today. We discussed hobbies and why you should have a hobby. A hobby should exercise your imagination. And it helps. It really, really helps. And that thing is called neuroplasticity. It just came to me. And that's okay. But I really think there's something to the neural plasticity because it helps. It helps you exercise your brain. And that helps with Alzheimer's and all that other kind of stuff that people get as they age. And you don't want to get that. So exercise your brain. It doesn't matter what the hobby is as long as you're being creative. And certain video games are even creative. Like those building games and stuff like that. Where you have to like design things. Um, most video games aren't creative because the creativeness has been done for you. Well, they do stimulate strategy and different areas of that part of your brain. Uh, creativity is still one that you should be stimulating. Okay. Okay. Since we've been talking, I've gotten three rows of my scarf done. Three rows. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Three rows. It's like 40 across. It's very pretty. Anyways. Anyways. 
we're good here. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful week and just stay calm, happy, healthy, and get a hobby. Get a hobby. Okay. Bye.